Alright, so mortars are a specific <laughs> type of artillery. And they're organic to infantry units. Their ability to be man carried along with the grunts. You know, integrated indirect fire support. Enough said. Anyway, the reason they're super great is because they're really easy to set up, quick response times. Bring fire safely within close range of friendly forces with good accuracy, range, and solid terminal effects. Um, anyway, it's more, mostly called the hip pocket artillery of the infantry. And anyway, we'll be using the 82mm one. This can shoot at a close range of 70 to 100 meters. So, I don't think we'll be able to kill each other. It's capable of hitting anything within 3.5Ks. So it'll be well out of fire and still be effective. And the typical time of flight is around 20 to 40 seconds, so... Oh, it's got to be accounted for. Anyway, just a few guidelines. Now, this is probably the most important one. Mortar teams need to take initiative even more than most other players. They sh you should set up mortars without having to be specifically told to. And in keeping with the overall intent and posture of the platoon. Anyway, you should be ideally protected from direct fire as best as possible. This means maybe being in a courtyard, a depression, a defilade, if you will. Uh, uh, or, you know, just some other place where natural terrain protects the team from observation or fire. Alright. This is also pretty important. You probably want to plot our targets in advance. If you're, you know, halted for a long time, start ranging in, you know, potential rally points, reach heads, that sort of thing. Just get the numbers written down and just be ready to act. Because until you get fluent, ranging and dialing in waters couldn't take a while. Um, and anyway, you're probably going to be using orders on you know, things you can actually hurt them with, usually buildings, infantry, soft vehicles. You're probably not even going to bother with medium armor or tanks. It's just not going to do too much at all. Anyway, use the right round if you have multiple ones, and you can mix them to have a more pronounced effect. White phosphorus and high explosive can really brighten your day, I guess. <laughs> anyway. I haven't really decided how we're going to structure the mortar team. I want to sort of build it so they can be operated by one man. But let's assume that we have enough for a two-man team. The uh, second person is not carrying ammo. will be providing security. And uh, that'll uh, be range and all that shit. Anyway, and if you've got to withdraw before packing up. or The closest thing we can get to spiking a mortar is uh, just to um, unpack. What I'm trying to say, disassembling it and taking one part of it so the enemy can't use it. Take the not tube part, not the bipod. Yeah, just get the tube or whatever, anything. Anyway, on to the practical. So, I want you to grab from the grey boxes a map tool, a range card, and some earplugs. And a pen and paper from around your desk if you don't have it already. After that, uh, regroup on me. How do you get up map pools? Tools? Yeah, self interact on the map. Ah. Once you've opened, they should be. They'll be in the bottom left of the map, so you have to scroll out and find them. Stuck. Alrighty, let's start the practical. If you don't have a clear line of sight, you can still use your map tools and still provide accurate fire. In fact, I expect most of the time you're going to be able to actually see your target when you're doing this. Alright, first things first, open up your map tools. They'll be in the bottom left once they're open. Then drag it over to uh, your position, or where you think you are. Once you brought it over, put the middle, yeah, the uh, circle on your position. Once you're lined up, I want you to pay attention to the outer numbers of the map tools. I'm measuring in radians here, it's a lot easier. It's like the imperial, sorry, it's the metric version. Alrighty, well, um, if I'm at my position aiming at one, I should have a radian or mil of... 15, 20. So that's 15.2, which is 
equatable to 1520. Wait, so which circle are we using? Inside or outside? The outer circle. Each, each subdivision is um, 20 mils. Hey, we should be writing this stuff down, right? This is the... Yep. Roger. Once you've got that lined up and your mill and or radian, you want to start getting a range. So you want to measure... This is where I was confused. You want to measure from your target to you. So your map tool has a, a, a ruler along the inside and the outside, so you can use whatever one you like. The outer ruler along the full edge is uh, marked in kilometres, the one in the inner edge is by 100 metres. Uh, once you've got all your numbers stored, you can hop back in your mortar. Uh, you can actually do this from the mortar as well. Once you're in your targeting camera, on self-interact and open your range table. A few things you'll notice, there's charge 0, 1 and 2. They represent different ranges and firing arcs. If you remember the artillery computer, they represent low, medium and high ranges. This allow you to fire further and do like a three shot volley allowing you to hit the same spot at exactly the same time if you're tricky but that could take some practice with these mortar setup. Anyway, so you want to find the elevation in that second column that corresponds with the range that you found when you're using your map tools. It's not probably not going to be exact, so you're going to have to use some guesswork to get it as close to as you can. Say that again, which columns, the second columns are range? No, no, so, so grab your, uh, so the range you've calculated, that's in the left column, so just go down, uh, you'll probably just need to select range, uh, charge 1 to get the right range, uh, find that range, then go to across to your elevation, find that elevation, if your range and elevation don't, oh sorry, if you're, because the ranges are in 50 mil, uh, 50 meter blocks, if, um, if, the range of calculator is not exactly that. You need to adjust your elevation towards the next value um, as a bit of guesswork. That makes sense. Sounds good to me. All right. So I just want to go um, quickly through what we uh, went through in the guided instruction there, uh, but a little bit quicker. Uh, we did it slow to uh, cope with people that um having a few dramas. Um, so for mortars on Ace, what you'll need is you'll need your map tools. Uh, always recommend you get some earplugs if you don't have them already, and the 82 millimeter range table. From that, next we'll pick our targets. Um, the first one we'll go for is the same one I was firing at uh, last time, which I believe is this one down here. We'll set a marker there. It'll be my first target. Second target will be uh, this building here. And if I have time, I'll go for a third one. Should be these windmills over here. Right, I come back into here. Remember where I am. So I'll get into the mortar. What you want to do? Interact. Bring up your map tools, a uh, small map tool for this one, I'm not uh, going that big a range. Bring it in. The guided mission we didn't have the uh, luxury of knowing where we are, otherwise I probably wouldn't have been so far off. 
we're pretty much right there. Uh, with harder game modes, you won't be able to have that luxury. Holding control, drag the tool around to the target. What you want to read off is these outer numbers here in mils or milliradians. So it's 3200, 3300, 3400, so we're in 34, 20, 40, 60. So we'll go 3465. So if you write down 3465, it'll be your azimuth uh, to the target. Next, you want to work out is the distance. Uh, you bring where the two zeros meet up there across uh, where your target is. Scroll in right here. So we're looking at uh, 8, 20, 40, 60, so about 860. So right down. Uh, 60 for your range, about 862 if you want to be accurate there. Jump out of your map tools, uh, just toggle mills if you need to if it's in degrees but as we see up here it's already in mills. So you want to bring up your range table. Here you'll see what the uh, calculations are for charge 1. Notice it only goes up to 450 meters. Uh, we want to go to range charge two. Charge two covers our up, goes up to our distance of 860. So it's only just above 850 there. Elevation. So when you adjust our elevation uh, to 1338. So and because we're at about 860, we're going to add say two the value of two to that. So we'll go. Sorry, we'll take a value. So I need to go lower elevation for a larger distance. We need a lower elevation by about four, two to three. So we'll go three, so one, three, three, five. Drop elevation per 100 meters of uh, down um, in height distance. So if we go back to our map, we're at um, just, we're in about 190, I believe that is. Our target is at the uh, height. It's 55, 50, 40, so it's about 45. So that's a drop of 150 meters. So if we go back to our range card, charge one. Uh, so drop elevation. So we're in the 850 mark for every 100 meters. We need to drop eight. So that's uh, eight. Uh, half of eight is so for the 50 meters is four. So 12. So we need a actually raise our elevation, increase our elevation by about 12, so we're on, um, we started at uh, 1335, if you add 12 to that, you get 1347, so that'll be our eventual elevation, 1347. Uh, the reason why that is, is um, if you, by raising the elevation you actually bring the distance shorter, uh, because the target is uh, lower than us, um, the, t the round will actually fall past them if we kept the same because uh, the uh, round is still moving away from us so we need to uh, make an elevation higher so it um, makes sure that lands directly on target uh, for about 850 we're looking at a time of flight of um, 26 seconds so we'll count 26 no, 20 seconds and then call splash so that'll be about 6 seconds from um, target hit Oh yeah, that's, so I've got all that information, now we need to look at the uh, top at our mills, we're looking at a 3465 in azimuth, the 3465 is right there, you see our target is that house, so I've got that pretty accurate, obviously a bit harder if you don't have, don't know your 
exact location so you may need to adjust if you can see the target you can adjust with this um, we're looking at it, so our range of 862 um, our calculator azimuth ended up being 1347 so we use page up and down to adjust our one our elevation using page up and down in the bottom right there we need to adjust that for 1347 one three if you can't get it exact it's a bit sensitive one three four eight it's probably fine once that's all set up oh and press f to change your charge because you remember we're on charge one and uh fire ten seconds Flash. Five seconds from now. Boom. Look at that. Almost dead on the house. Alright. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to the map tools. Let's go back to our map. Bring our dot back to where we are. Luckily we've know exactly where we are. We're going to go for target 2. Do a line up on target 2. Zoom in if you want to get as accurate as you want. Uh, again we're looking at uh, the mills here so we're looking at 2620. It's uh, lined up nicely so uh, azimuth of 2620. Um, looking at a distance. Bring that right in. So the distance is over 1k, so now what we do is we uh, bring our outer edge out and stick the zero on there, go down to where our target is. What's my target? There it is. So we're looking at so 1k, so these are in the uh, subdivision here is 100 meters, so we're looking at 1,000 meters and 80 I believe 20 and 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 yep so 1080 meters uh, elevation for the target is so 50 60 so it's about uh, 62 meters up so 62 and we are 190 oh, from memory oh, 189 so, so looking at um, just over 100 meters so about 110 meters 100 not exact but uh, close enough all right so I go back into here Let's all adjust our azimuth now, so we're looking at a 2620 azimuth. 2620. Be out there. Bring up the range table. So obviously, charge zero doesn't go out to a thousand meters or one kilometer. Charge one does, it goes out to 1050. Oh, and the, so we're looking at um, something halfway between uh, 1285 and 1266. If we go about uh, 1275, 1275, they're about 100 meters uh, below us. So we need to increase our elevation. Increase elevation by about 11, so we'll add 12. So um, we'll go 12, 1287. 12, it works out as so elevation of 1287 on charge one. Time of flight for this one will be about 25.8 seconds. Because uh, we uh, 
the elevation is lower than our previous target it's actually taking a more direct route it's not going up as high so it's going to hit sooner um so yep elevation will be 1287 so bring out 12 87 uh, yep we're all set for that um so file one file two file three counting go see where the target's going to hit this time So he pretty damn close to that uh, building. Could have probably changed the uh, azimuth a little bit, uh, but it's close enough. All right, go for uh, one more, and we'll go for those uh, windmills. We'll just get this gunner. All right, bring up the map tools. We want to put this directly on ourselves. Mount. Uh, bring that in as close as we want, so directly in line with those windmills. So we're looking at an azimuth of uh, 172468, so 1775. Uh, uh, distance will be well over a K. Put the zero go away. Zero on our mortar location. Read out up here. So looking at 100, 100 to 200 and 10, 20, 30. So 200, 1,230 meters. So 1,230 meters. And their elevation is 76. So about 120 lower than. Correction, about 80, 120 blow blasts. Alright, so we'll set the azimuth, uh, so 1775. 17. We need to uh, look at the ground here, 1775. So to work out our elevation we need, back to our range table, charge one, charge one takes us out to 12.30 meters. So looking at uh, around 12.50, or between 12.50, 1250 here. So looking at uh, our elevation will be uh, between uh, 12.07 and 11.86, so let's go with um, 1190, 1190, uh, about 100 meter drop, so just over 100 meter drop, so it's about 15, so add 15 to our elevation, so it'll be 1205, so elevation will be 1205, and time of flight will be about 25 seconds again. Alright, so elevation 1205. One, two, zero, five. Two, three. And we'll see our effect on the, those windmills. Waiting. Oh, I didn't count this one out. I'd say a bit splash now. Oh, a bit soon. So a bit right, so we could have uh, taken a little bit off our azimuth, but pretty damn close. Pretty much scared the enemy. Uh, thanks for watching.